Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be covering chapter 10, stage and pack column design. So basically what this chapter covers are the correlations and details in designing a column. So that's useful for finding things like the diameter, the HETP, or if the column is weeping. Um, one other really important takeaway that I'm not going to cover in this video, but that you should definitely look at, is the Fenske equation. So you can find this in chapter 10 in your textbook, and it's basically a really useful shortcut to help you find n min, which is the minimum number of stages at total reflux. So definitely put that on your formula sheet. Okay, so the question we're going to be doing is D9, and I've written down um, everything the question has given us because it is a little bit of a long paragraph. So when you're given a question like that, a really useful first step is to read it once and then read it a second time and get all your useful information out of it. Um, so I'm not going to go over it. You can pause the video and read the question yourself. But basically, it asks us to find the diameter. And now the diameter of such a column, you can find this equation in your textbook, is equal to this kind of big, ugly looking equation. So it's 4 times V MWV over pi mu rho v fraction u flood times 3,600. So one really important thing about this equation moving forward is that practically everything is going to be in imperial units, which is something um, we're not used to seeing and can be a little bit tricky, but if you keep everything in the annoying imperial units, it will be easier down the line. So basically what you have here is you have your vapor flow rate coming out of the column, your molecular weight of the vapor, then also um, these efficiencies that were given, as well as the fraction of the flooding velocity, which was again given in the question here as 75%. And then this 3,600 is just a conversion factor to turn something that's going to be in hours into seconds. Okay, so the first step, if we want to be able to calculate this diameter, is to see what in this equation we have and what we don't have. So one thing that we do not have is V, um, and we also don't have all of the properties of V. So the molecular weight, because we don't yet know the composition, um, and we don't know the density. Um, one other thing that we don't know is the flooding velocity. Everything else was given. So now we're just going to go through and find all of these parameters. So the first thing um, I'm going to find is V. So we're told we have a column with the feed coming in at some given composition. And then, of course, your distillate and your bottoms. And we also know that when um, the distillate comes back in, um, this is what becomes L, and what goes up is V. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, like in any steps problem when we're stuck, is we're just going to do a mass balance. So the first thing we're going to do is find D and B, so that we can then focus on finding B. So if you just do your overall mass balance of F equals D plus B, and the same thing for your component balance, because again, you're given the composition of your distillate and your bottoms in the question, you can just do FZ equals D XD plus B XB. Okay, and I'm not going to show you the step by step of this because I'm sure by now in the course you've done it loads of times. But if you do this, um, you'll find that D equals 596, 56 kilomoles per hour, and B equals 403.44 kilomoles per hour. Okay, so. Now the other balance you can perform around your column is right at the top because, again, as the question told us, we're going to be focusing on just the top of the column. Um, so you can see, if you do a little balance here, with the vapor coming in, the liquid also comes out, and D also comes out. So that means that V equals L plus D. You also have the other piece of information that L over V equals 0 0.6. So since you just calculated D, now you just have two equations and two unknowns. So you can find that your V is equal to 1,491.4 kilomoles per hour. 
Okay, so we found V, but like I said before, this equation works in imperial units. So now we're going to have to convert this from um, kilomoles per hour into something in pounds. So I suggest you do it in pound mass per hour. That way, these two terms just become one. Um, and these conversions you can just look up on the internet, write down on your formula sheet, or memorize. It's sort of trivial, um, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So your V was 1,491.4 kilomoles per hour. And then you know the molecular weight of methanol is just 32 kilograms per kmol. And then you can also look up that 2.046 um, pounds per kilogram. So you'll get a total V equal to, I'll write it over here, um, of 105.3 pound mass per hour. Okay, so now that we've found the vapor flow rate, the next step is to find the density of this vapor. Um, and this we can do just simply using the ideal gas law. It told us we could assume ideal gas in the question. And we're also given a pressure of one atmosphere. Um, so in order to find um, the temperature, though, that we need to use for this is we know we're operating at the top of the column right now. And we know that the vapor is basically all methanol. So what that means is that the temperature at the top is going to be equal to the boiling temperature of methanol. So that, if you look it up, it's um, 64.5 degrees Celsius. Um, for this question, you had to look it up, but usually you would be given it in a question. Um, and if we change it, again, because we're going to have to work in imperial units just to get what we want, this is equal to 607.79 Rankine, which if you haven't seen before, again, it's like Fahrenheit or Celsius, just another way to measure temperature so that we can convert it into whatever units we want to more easily. Um, so if we set the ideal gas law up, we have one atmosphere um, times, or rather this equals the density of the gas, because we're just going to divide that over. And then you can find your R constant. You can use another constant and then convert back later too, but I'm just doing everything here in one step so that we don't have to do more unit conversions down the line. So that's in feet cube atmospheres per pound mole R times, again, the temperature. And because this is in pound mole, um, we actually want to convert that to pound mass so that we can get our density in terms of mass over volume and not moles over volume. So that just means we're going to have to divide by 32 um, pound mass per pound mole. Okay, so if you just plug this all in, you're going to get a density equal to 0 0.07219 um, pound mass over feet cubed. Again, has to be an imperial unit so that we can plug it into our diameter equation. Okay, so now we have everything we need in terms of the vapor. The last thing we're missing, however, is we have to find U flood. So that's our flooding velocity. Okay, so if you go to the, your textbook, and I'll show you a picture in this video too, um, there's an equation as well as a graph that you can use. So the equation, I'll write it down. Um, U flood is equal to CB times your surface tension over 20 to the power of 0.2 times the square root of density of your liquid minus density of vapor over density of vapor. And this will give you your flooding velocity in feet per second. You can tell by the weird exponent that this is a correlation. So again, we have to be really careful about our units because it will only work with imperial units. Okay, so the first thing um, we can find really easily is the surface tension because we were given an equation for it here um, just as a function of temperature. I believe the temperature was in degrees Celsius for this correlation, but if you just simply plug it in, you will get um, that it's equal to 19. And now 
we can move on to finding our um, CB. So this is, sorry, CP. This is just known as um, the capacity factor, and you can find it using a graph. So I'll show the graph here. Okay, so in order to be able to use this graph, we're going to need two things. So the first thing we're going to need is our plate spacing so we know what line to use. So this is given in the question as 0.4572 meters, but like I said before, we need imperial units in order to use this graph, so that's just equal to 18 inches. And it's great, we're not going to have to interpolate because if you look on your graph, you'll see that that 18 inch line is right there. The other thing we need is we need to find our point on the x-axis, so this is given by this equation and we have all the values calculated from before. So if you just plug everything in, the only extra step you're going to have to do is in order to find your density of your liquid, um, you're just gonna use the one that was given and convert it to imperial units again. So plugging everything in, we have L over V is 0.6 from before, and then we have our vapor density calculated from before also, and then our liquid density, all to the power of 0 0.5. So if you plug this in, um, you'll get that you need to read off of your x-axis 0 0.02294. So if you see where um, this point on this line is, and then check to see what your um, capacity factor is on your y-axis, you're going to find that it's approximately equal to 0 0.28. If you get anywhere from 0.25 to about 0.3, you're probably okay because it is um, just reading a graph, so there is a little bit of leniency with the value you choose. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to be able to plug everything now into our flooding velocity equation from before. So I'm just going to rewrite it. Again, nothing has changed from the first time that I wrote this. We just have all of our values, and now we can plug them in. Okay, so since we have everything, um, our flooding velocity is just going to be equal to 7.25 feet per second. And this is the last thing we need to find. So now we can just plug everything into our diameter equation that I showed at the very beginning. Um, again, double check your units to make sure that everything um, cancels to give you an answer in feet in the end. And if you do that, you should get a diameter of 10.27 feet. And that is how you do these sizing problems. So again, the most important takeaways are to be able to know what correlations you have to use from the textbooks and to also be sure that everything is imperial units so that you're able to use those correlations.